Hey guys, what's up? Spartan 85 here. Welcome to 20 quick tips for the console version of 7 Days to Die. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, then you've probably seen some of these tips. I'm trying to throw in some new ones, but I wanted to compile a video kind of with all of my tips all in one. And we're going to make these super quick. We're going to try to do this under 10 minutes. So I, I know you guys, your guys' time is valuable, so I want to show you this. First tip is to use the hatch trick. I, that's what I call it at least. Throw down a hatch on a doorway like this. If you have a doorway in a house, throw down a hatch. Uh, get your uh, wooden axe, upgrade it. You can just use wood and then iron to upgrade this thing. And now you have a doorway that you can use melee against the zombies. Uh, you can whack them over the head like that and you can kind of raid this in peace. You can also use it, if you're getting backed in, you can put down a hatch right here in the hallway, in the bathroom, you know, for horde night or something like that. Just a quick, easy thing to do to protect you guys. All right, my second tip is to early game, and I like to do this day one, is to make an iron reinforced club. Stop using the wooden club or whatever you're using and make an iron reinforced club. All it takes is you need 100 iron and you need 20 pieces of the wood. You can get iron pretty quick from hacking at stones and then scrapping the raw iron or just scrapping cans, but once you can get 100 iron, you can craft the iron reinforced club. And it's right down here. This is it here. Um, compared if you just look at the block the entity damage is 20.4 which is really darn good early game if you can get an iron reinforced club make one early day one do that third tip is when you're sitting at in a house at night like after day one or day two i like to call it nerd craft i think some people call it bolt crafting but bolt craft wooden clubs just you can click here and just click let's just make let's say 10 and what this is going to do is you're going to raise your weapon smithing up. And each one's going to get a little bit, a little better. 377, 378. You're raising your weapon crafting. So do that at night. You can also do this with arrows. And then you can also do this with the wooden axe, the stone axe too. Make a whole bunch of stone axes. If you have plant fibers and stone and wood, make a whole bunch. That's going to raise your tool smithing up. Uh, you want to do that at night. If you're just sitting there and staring at the wall, nerd craft weapons and axes. All right, my next tip, and you need schematics for some of these, but day one, you can usually start making cloth armor, cloth leg armor, cloth head armor, cloth chest armor. You can start making armor. I recommend day one, as soon as you get your hands on some cloth, like let's see, the chest armor takes eight pieces of cloth. You can get that, get that from literally hacking a couch. If you have a couch in here, hack a couch and you got some cloth. You can make some cloth leg armor. Once you get the schematics, I highly recommend making these leather chest armor and the leather gloves. They're really good for moving around. They give you a little bit of protection and you're gonna and you're gonna you're gonna be able to move around. You can also start to make um, iron uh, scrap iron stuff. Uh, here they are scrap gloves, scrap chest armor Start making those. You need the schematic for those too, but these are really good too. They take they take some duct tape. I don't have that on me right now, but these are really good. So I highly recommend keep an eye on your armor and make it super early if you can too. It will help you with the, getting stunned by the zombies. Okay, my next tip, and I don't have any dogs here, but I just want to show something real quick. If you're in an area with a lot of dogs, like the wasteland or you know, something like that. You can carry barbed wire or barbed wire fence in your tool belt. And this also works for zombies too. If you're running at night or you're just having trouble with the zombies. There's actually a zombie over here. Let's do this real quick. Okay, we got our attention. So if they're coming at you, you can lay down this barbed wire fence. It's kind of out there and it's gonna hook. See how they're, they're held up like that. You can also put down this as she just lost her feet. So they're gonna, it's gonna make them walkers. So you have barbed wire and barbed wire. I just want to show you barbed wire takes literally 15 iron to make. Make one and then barbed wire fence takes iron and wood. So these are really easy to make. Honestly the barbed wire, just the one that this one here works fine. As you can see it turned her into a car. So if you're having trouble with zombies, throw up some barbed wire. Uh, works great on dogs too. Okay my next tip is to get the forge down early. Get it down day one, day two, day three. It's my my recommendation you need a 50 stone 50 clay a bellows and a short iron pipe bellows takes either 20 leather or 20 animal hide and if you have animal hide you can turn that into leather to make the bellows and then one short iron pipe you can usually get from just breaking down a toilet or something like that you can get one pretty good 
lay it down as fast as you can. Okay, here's my forge. I'm gonna lay it down just right here. Um, if you go into it, you wanna, the first thing you wanna do is the anvil. You wanna get an anvil crafted, and then I would recommend making iron arrows and forged iron. I would make iron arrows and forged iron. That's what you really need. Forged iron leads to tools and weapons and iron arrows are just so much better than stone arrows. So that's my recommendation. I will be putting out a more thorough forge tutorial very soon, but get it down. Okay guys, my next tip is if you come across a forge, a workbench, a chem station, a cement mixer, or even a bird's nest, you can actually take these things apart and you can carry them in your inventory, except for the bird's nest. Now the forge can be found in some of these small uh, kind of starter houses, I call them, you know, entry level houses. And how you do it is you want to first hack them with a pickaxe. You can use a steel pickaxe, an iron pickaxe, you can even use your stone axe. So let's hack this a little bit uh, and then we'll switch over to our stone axe. And we need to take it down pretty low, to about probably 15-ish or so, because the wrench doesn't do hardly any damage, is the reason I do this. Once you get it low enough, switch to the wrench, and you have to take it apart with the wrench to carry it. I just put the forge in my inventory. Let's go ahead and go to the workbench. Now that's in my inventory. The chem station is now in my inventory. And same for the cement mixer. Although, uh, I need to take this down a little bit more. Now that's in my inventory. And then bird's nest, once you search them, I already searched this one, but yeah, get the feathers and the eggs out, and then you can actually rinse this thing apart and get more feathers. So if you're on the on the hunt for more feathers, and you actually get cloth on it too, you can rinse them apart. Just a FYI, workbenches can be found in some of the gas stations, some of the auto shops, and chem stations can be found in the poppin' pills, normally. And like, there's a cement mixer in a cave somewhere, but I don't know exactly where that is. Okay, my next tip is if you come across a whole bunch of electrical parts and you can find these in light fixtures a lot of these houses have light fixtures like this one right here um, if you take this one apart you'll start getting electrical parts and so if you just want to take these apart let's see how many we get i think we're going to get about five or six from this one so and, and, and you go inside there's light fixtures in here if you want to start taking these apart you're going to get electrical parts and if you can have a workbench you have to have a workbench for this but click on your electrical parts go to recipes and you can make ceiling lights, porch lights, and street lights. Now you need forged steel for the street lights. You get the same amount of money for making all of these. So let's just make, and you need forged iron. So you gotta have forged iron for this. Let's make, um, let's just make 10 porch lights real quick. Okay, let's check our workbench. We got five done so far. The others are still crafting. So let's bring those down. Uh, let's bring down this other one. That's six. And if you highlight it, all these are worth 950 coins. So if you can just craft these porch lights out, you can kind of sell them to the trader. I mean, sell as many as you can, but that's an easy way to make coin in this game. Really easy way to make some coin is just craft those out. Okay, my next tip is if you have a wall sieve like this and you don't have an easy way to get into it and you don't want to beat in it, you can actually drop the safe. Um, and what you do is you hack out the block that the safe is in. And sometimes it takes some finagling. Like, see, it's not going to drop right now. So sometimes you got to drop some blocks around it. Let's hack out this one here. There we go. Sometimes you got to hack out a couple blocks around it. So now we dropped it and we have a loot bag. And then you can get to your loot. There's some rifle parts in there. So just a quick tip, especially with wood frames around, the, around it, just hack out the blocks around it. And a lot of times you can get that safe to drop. The one thing to remember about this is it will not respawn. So if you're all about loot respawn in like 30 days, it will not respawn. Just keep that in mind. Okay, guys, my next tip is if you're on the hunt for mechanical parts, where the heck do you find them? I'm in the Brother Theater, the big theater movie theater. Uh, you can get them from these chairs. These are a great place to get them. I got one from that one and one from that one. You can also get them from these filing cabinets, too, if you want to rip these filing cabinets apart. Okay, just from that, I got four mechanical parts. So keep that in mind. The best place, in my opinion, to get mechanical parts is gas pumps. If you can find a passing gas or a place that has gas pumps, uh, you can get a whole butt ton of mechanical parts from there. Okay, my next tip is what to do early game with skills. In my opinion, it is best to go sexual tyrannosaurus right off the bat. You, it replenishes your stamina and makes you not burn as much stamina, especially when you don't have a mini bike for the first, you know, 10 to 15 days. Put as many points into sexual tyrannosaurus as you can, and you can get each level by leveling up athletics. So as you can see, I got it maxed out. The next best thing, in my opinion, 
is to go into Pummel Pete, uh, which is right here. I get a level 4 out of 5, and you get that by doing blunt weapons, and blunt weapons goes up by just whacking zombies with sticks and, and bats and stuff, but Pummel Pete, you know, entity damage, plus 45%, and stamina degrad degradation is negative 40%. So that's huge. You don't lose when you're getting in a battle with a bunch of zombies. That's a big, big deal. So if you, if you level that up, it those two will get you through the first, you know, 10 to 20 days of the game. And that and archery. Put some points into archery. But those two are great. Uh, and speaking of skill points, the next thing that you want to do is also put some points into unlocking the workbench. Um, and you have to unlock that in this alpha. I know PC, you just have to basically found the schematic, but... It costs 15 points, and you have to get construction tools to level 20. So there's your construction tools. So you do get construction tools by, you know, beating down rocks, beating down doors and stuff like that. And then you can unlock the workbench. So other thing you can do is what I showed you earlier is wrench a workbench apart, and then you have one. So you don't have to worry about putting points in. But if you can't find a workbench, put some points in the workbench perk so you can unlock the recipe for it. Okay, guys, my next tip is if you're out riding around or walking around and you come across these little kind of gravel pits, or what do you want to call them, these are where you're going to get coal and nitrate. So if you're after coal and nitrate, hack these apart. Let's see, this one is going to be nitrate powder. And if you combine nitrate powder and coal, you're going to get gunpowder. So if you're after gunpowder, like making the blunderbuss or something like that, that's where you're going to get it. I just came across another gravel pit here, so I think this one's going to be coal. So there's coal here. And then... You know, you can take coal and nitrate powder if you want, combine them into gunpowder. So it's a two and two. You can get, if you use the chem station, it's one and one. So it's a little better than the chem station. So just FYI, if you're out running around, hack these things apart for some easy uh, coal and nitrate powder. Okay, guys, my next tip is if you happen to have the workbench and you need this for it, you can combine um, gun parts in the workbench to make them better. So, and you have, you cannot combine actual guns together. You have to combine the parts. So let's say... We have some hunting rifle parts here. So let's combine the hunting rifle receiver. And and I'm pushing down on the right joystick to do this. It, it quickly adds to that. So level 216 to level 492 makes a level 502 receiver. This will also fully repair it. So if you have a part that's, you know, half dead, throw it in here with another part and it'll be fully repaired. So you can do that. It's That's what's really nice about having the workbench early is once you find these parts throughout the world, Bring them back to your base and just keep combining them. Keep combining them and make better and better parts. And then you can make a hunting rifle like this with a really good level 530. So when you when you have a when you have this, click on it, go to assemble. You can pull the let's say you have a, let's say you have two stocks. You'll pull this stock out and then combine it with the stock you found in the world. Even if the stock's like a level four stock. It will repair this level 491 stock a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Get the workbench, combine gun parts. You can also do this with tools. You can combine hammers, you can combine uh, pickaxes. You can combine everything to repair it. Use that way to repair all your items and make them better. Okay guys, my next tip is to keep an eye on your wellness and keep raising that wellness. So if you go into character, you'll see wellness. Mine is 115 to 240. So Things you do in the world keep raising the wellness. And the best way to raise wellness is eating bacon and eggs, in my opinion. It gives you one plus one wellness. Let's go and eat that. So it's going to raise your wellness. And if when your wellness gets full, you'll get a point into your max health and your max stamina by doing that. So the other one that's really good is the goldenrod tea. I know it's a little bit less, but if you can make goldenrod tea and just keep drinking those and eating bacon and eggs, your wellness will go up. And keep doing that there's a perk also that's really handy called the survivor it's the very top one basically if you put points into that everything you do your all your wellness will go up so eating bacon and eggs makes you have let's go and throw a point of that i don't think it shows up in the bacon and eggs but basically everything you do that you're trying to raise your wellness with like bacon and eggs and golden raw tea it's going to be more now everything you do is going to make your wellness better so you want to get your max health and your max stamina up high and by doing that you raise your wellness okay so my next tip guys is i would recommend making cobblestone frames now you can make wood frames by using those but make some cobblestone frames and you're going to need cobblestone rocks to go along with this also so let's make some cobblestone frames bring these down their inventory and they just place down like regular frames yeah just place them down like this 
like that. So, and then you upgrade these with cobblestone rocks. And what's nice about these is you can stand on these and shoot arrows through them. If you lock, if you watch my last Horde Knight in the Vagabond series, you can shoot them out of these pretty, pretty easy. So, and they're gonna need cobblestone rocks to upgrade these. So just go, we'll go upgrade this one real quick. And right there, it's it's already 1,500 points. So compared to, let's, I have some flagstone rocks. Let's bring those down real quick. If you lay down flagstone, this is only 500. So now this is 1,500 points. Really easy to upgrade. Doesn't take a lot of resources. Um, and you can stand on top of them. And you can move these too. Um, now, next question I'm sure is how do you get cobblestone rocks? That is going to be clay soil. And you find clay soil by going to the map and all these brown spots. This is all clay soil. Go there and dig it up with your shovel. And then you need stone. And stone can be found. I mean, I can probably turn around and find a stone somewhere. But just find the big boulders. I think there's one way over there. But yeah, cobblestone rocks and uh, stone. I'm sorry, clay soil and stone make cobblestone rocks. There they are right there. Uh, lump of clay and small stone. So make those and use these. These are great for building horde bases. Check out my Vagabond series, day seven. I used, I built, I built a quick pit base out of these. So check that out if you guys want more details on that. And speaking of the Vagabond series, um, let's go and jump over to the day seven horde. I'll show you guys that real quick. So basically I built a really quick pit base in one day. I was challenged by my community to build uh, a horde base in one day and I chose to do a pit base. So these are really easy to make. I dug three deep and about probably six wide, it's three by six, um, you know, kind of a pit. And then I just built these cobblestone frames up and I upgraded them and you just rain down arrows on them all night. So try out a pit base. If you've never tried out a pit base, they're very easy and simple. Um, and you can do more and more to them and then put spikes at the bottom, let the zombies fall down into them and you can also put barbed bar wire fins or anything like that down there too and let them just fall down and rain down arrows on them all night uh, it's a great great court base okay guys my next tip this is a little later in game usually not till day seven or eight you'll be able to make this but you need forged iron you need 20 pieces of forged iron and 20 wood to make the spiked club this thing is just decimates the zombies so it causes bleeding damage you knock off the limbs like crazy, but so I highly recommend making this spiked club. I'm using that currently in my my present vagabond series, so check it out if you if you don't know anything about it. But and and you can you can repair it with forged iron, or you can just make new ones with forged iron. So I that's kind of goes back to the forge laying down the forge early and getting forged iron early will allow you to make these spiked clubs, which are just amazing. You can also make the iron sledgehammer too, which are a lot of fun. I will say. Okay, and my last tip, guys, is I want to recommend, kind of a recommendation almost, try it. If you've never tried a knife build, and I mean like a knife guy build, try it. It's actually a lot of fun. I did it in my Sheriff series, so if you want to go back and watch that, you can. But the hunt, it's actually a lot of fun, and you get a lot of de decapitations. So hunting knife only takes eight forged iron. It doesn't take a lot, and eight wood. And then you'll go into your skills, and there's actually a perk called knife guy. And you want to start throwing that up. So it, it just like Pummel Pete, it lowers your stamina and it causes more entity damage. And it's raised by blade weapons. So the more blade weapons you use, it, the higher it's going to go. If you can find a machete, either by looting or at the trader, those are awesome too. So try out all those. You can also go into the decapitator. You can put points into that, which your blade weapons has to be 20. And it just raises your dism dismemberment chance. So... I highly recommend trying a knife build if you haven't yet and just go for headshots. It's a blast. Well, guys, that's it. That's 20 quick tips. Um, hopefully it went by really quick. We'll see. But uh, if you want more content, I have a lot of tutorials, a lot of how to's and stuff on my channel. So if you want to subscribe and check those out. And I also have a current Xbox series called The Vagabond. So if you want to check that out. Um, I also am playing the forest right now and I also have a darkness falls series coming up really quick So anyway guys, thanks for watching love all the feedback Be sure to let me know any more tips and tricks you guys want to see and I will see you guys later. Bye